Hey guys, Jared Littner. Today we're out here at Lake Lopez. I got Daniel and Corey with me. Usually they're the ones behind the camera filming all the vlogs for you guys. And uh, we wanted to get out and do some fishing. It's the first vlog of the new year, actually. Uh, I just got my boat wrapped, my truck wrapped, and I'm headed to the Bass Pro Tour at Lake Kissimmee for the Major League Fishing. And uh, they wanted to do some fishing. So they called me last night, what should we tie up? And, that kind of stuff and I didn't really want to disclose all my secrets as of yet so I'm going to kind of take them around the lake show them how I would approach it how I would expect to catch them here you know it's dead of winter it's 50 degree water temp which isn't that bad but uh, it's a it's a kind of a weird lake to figure out at times and uh, after that I think we're going to have a little little mini tournament with a little slight twist so uh, oh, there be should be fun. I don't know what Corey's thinking. He hasn't been fishing in a while, so we're gonna have to get some backlashes and you know probably lots of brush bites and things like that. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, it's all about having fun today. Let's go get them. Classes in session, Mr. Littner. <laughs> Fishing these kind of these vertical walls, you know, the channel kind of runs up right up against here. So, but they got to get bigger than that. See, I tricked you guys though. I'm actually throwing a prototype. That's my new Eco Pro jig that we've been working on. We had one a few years back. I'll let this guy go. He's just a little guy. They get bigger, I promise you. Below the gunnel, no penalty. Uh, but we had one a few years back and we redesigned it with a different hook, better weed guard. And uh, so this is one of the custom colors. I'll turn it out here in the light. Uh, kind of that natural green pumpkin orange, but a uh, little bit lighter wire hook, not super light, kind of a medium. And when it's fishing deep, like that fish right there bit me in probably 40 to 45 feet. Um, you know, having that having that smaller diameter hook is going to allow easier penetration into the fish's mouth. So, you know, I had it rigged with a little jackal 3.5 chunk craw, and uh, I like it so far. They just need to get bigger, but we got a couple of cool colors too, though. That a, a purple one that usually out here if it was overcast and stuff, that brown purple um, kind of got a little silver in it. It's pretty sweet, so. Luckily, I'm the only guy in the boat that has any. They're in my pocket, so these chumps can't have any. I'll be getting in your pocket. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh -huh. This is a better one. You get him? That one smoked it down there. That was deep, deep, deep. Like 40, 50, or? Ah, uh, he's not that big. Just ski them in. Look at that. I ate that thing. They like it. They like it. See, and that's the deal. When you get, I was mentioning about that smaller hook, or that lighter, lighter wire hook, that fish was hooked right there in the root. So right there in the bone. With a heavier wire hook, you're gonna have more problems drilling a fish like that, hooking them with, you know, 16 pound line, that fish is actually 51 feet, so. Yeah, that's bad. Ooh. Poor eyeballs. It'll be fine once it goes back down. It's important too when you catch fish, you know, in the winter time, out deep and, they, and they, their air bladders explode. Don't play around with them a lot. As soon as you can get them back in the water, their air bladders will, will return back to normal and you don't, you know, the problem arises where if you catch a nice one, you want to take a nice picture or something, you put in your live well, the thing expands. If you don't know how to needle them right, fizz them, you're gonna, you're gonna kill the fish. And nobody wants that, so they're fun to catch. Take a quick picture or whatever if you catch a big one and let them go right away. That way their air bladders 
go back to normal, and they're fine. You can catch them again in the spring, and everything's good to go. Got one? What? Really? He's on on the understand. On the bank? Oh, wow. Angry. Smallmouth? It's acting like it, huh? I don't know. Big hog? That's a decent one. I don't say it's a hog, so it's a pound. Spin bait on the bank. Underspin? Underspin, getting some sun. Dude, Dude, that's a big nice one. one. You got it? It's a big one. Nice, nice Corey. One. Shallow. Yeah. That'll work. Nice one. It looks like it spawned out. He was eating crawdads though, look at him. Now. Oh wow, yeah. It was right Ooh. on the bank, huh? All right, I caught that fish on a revenge underspin. On the back of it, I had a 3.3, I believe, cut down uh, Kitek electric shad color. Had a straight 20 pound SX1 Sunline braid. Usually I have a leader on there, but got a little lazy today. Uh, the rod is a 790, 763 Dobbins Champion series. It's a particular series where this rod has been discontinued, but I think they have it. Um, in another series as well. The reel was a Sustain 3000. It's a great little setup for all kinds of any finesse technique or finesse power stuff at all. It's a cool little setup. One of the things, like when you're fishing a jig deep like this, a lot of people want to fish it more like, you know, quick and it, you got to remember the water's cold, these fish are on the bottom, you know, we're fishing 45 to 55 feet. So, you know, generally speaking, when the water gets cold, I mean, back east, I get water temps in the upper 30s, even, even you know, mid 40s a lot of times. So the slower and more subtle you can work that bait, the better. Um, that's a mistake I see a lot of guys doing here locally when, when I'm fishing out here with my kids or whatever, is they'll, they'll make a cast. A lot of times they won't even let it hit the bottom and they're, they're shaking their rod and doing all that, which is fine at certain times of the year. But what I've found just over the years fishing out here, the less movement, the better. So sometimes I've even had it where it's just a sweeping drag like this. I mean, real slow, um, and it, it catches big ones. You know, as the water temp warms up, then you could institute more, more action into the bait, but cold water, less action, more bites. So um, it's, it's kind of a weird deal also because, you know, there's nothing to say that we couldn't run to the back in the, in the narrows back behind us here and throw a crankbait, a moving bait, and catch some. But you got to remember, not all fish, these fish that are living out here in 45 or 50, at some point they're going to move up there where you might be able to crank them. But no wind, sun's up, kind of mid-morning, I, I don't... I personally don't have confidence in going and throwing an umbrella rig or a crankbait along that bank. So, and I'm seeing them out here in that 45 to 55 depth. So, keep your bait in the strike zone, work it slow. So, every cast, you just got to imagine that you're bringing that jig or that worm <coughs> over a rock or whatever, and you got to remember that just fish it slow and, and be patient. I think we're going to move up to this next wall, try that. All right, so like I mentioned earlier, we're out here in the winter time, and, and first of all, I don't think a lot of guys really utilize their electronics the way they should. You know, like I mentioned, for here, the water temp is cold, the fish are deep, and what, the way I got this Garmin set up right here, I got a split screen. One's a clear view image, shooting straight down, and one's a 2D sonar. So what I'm looking for, like you see right there, there's some bait, there's fish underneath it. But a lot of times out here and, and many bodies of water, you'll see just blankets of bait, especially in the winter or the fall. What I like to do is get away from that. If there's too much bait, it, 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 to me, it's too hard to compete against the real thing. I like a little bit, just like we see here. Um, you know, there's just a little bit. When I was out here like three weeks ago, this whole area right through here was nothing but a solid carpet of bait. 
So now this is all broken up. You can see the you see there's fish right there, there's fish right there, that's a ball of bait. The other cool thing that I recommend to anybody fishing a lake that doesn't have um, you know your, your typical mapping or it's not mapped right or you, you know I've fished this lake my whole life I know every stick and log and rock but it's very simple with these Garmin's all you do is you go to the home screen uh, you go to your charts like that and you can see that it's just I mean there's no really contour but now that I do this quick draw contour start recording now I'm gonna map this lake so when I'm on my trolling motor I'm fishing down the bank or fishing a ledge it's actually mapping this for me the the bottom of the lake and you can over time if you wanted to you can go back and forth on your big motor but over time just fishing around you can actually have the best map of your local lake that anybody ever has and uh, so it's a really cool feature um, I, I had it on my last year's boat unfortunately when I sold the boat now the guy has the map of this lake and uh, I'm gonna have to get that back but I got to start all over. Um, so by the end of the day, I'm going to leave this on. I'll show you what I'm talking about as far as the, the different contour lines and how well this Garmin maps the bottom of the lake, even though there's not, not a Navy Onyx chip or a Lake Master chip. I have my own Jared Littner chip for Lake Lopez or whatever your home lake is. So it's a really cool feature. Um, you can see right here, it's already starting to map it. You see the way it's drawn the contours, whereas before it just looked like, you know, there's nothing really there. So really cool tool. Pay attention to your electronics during this time of year, during the fall, very important. You know, utilize it for your mapping, find the bait or less bait or structure, rocks, logs, whatever you have. That's why you have these type of units. Use them and you're gonna catch more fish. Bike, farm, broke off. Oh. Give me a tip on retying. <clears throat> oh, 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 oh. oh. <coughs> Set the hook, Junior. He ain't got hands. Hey, your, your tip's wrapped up too, kid. Yep. You got one? Yeah. A nice bottom. If you get that one in, we can walk home. How's it way out here? <clears throat> yep. Finally. Got in. It's way out there, man. What we're doing over here is any time in the winter where you got like a vertical wall, which on this place is only like two of them. Those fish will get right on the uh, right on the drop of it. And it. It's easy for them to move up and down. And I don't know if everybody can see. I'm kind of kind of over the log boom there. So what it is, that's that's legal to fish. They just have it in there for the boat, so they don't get in that intake right there. But like I was saying, these vertical stretches, especially with the big heavy jig, I switched to a one ounce jig. Um, the fish can suspend off them, sit on the bottom, move up, move down. So a lot of different uh, feeding stretches for these fish. So finally got another one, a decent fish. Let him go. So that last fish I caught, I switched to a heavier jig just because the wind started blowing. So first of all, this is a one ounce jig. It's actually an Omega, kind of old school for me. Uh, with a little chicken craw on it. Um, and again, it, it was because the wind started blowing, I wanted a heavier jig. So this is actually a seventh, seventh, eighth ounce. And the rod I was throwing, which I've grown really fond of, especially for these big jigs, is a 7.5 Ritual, the Series 2, heavy. Heavy action because I'm making these long casts, I'm fishing in deep water. I want a lot of power when I set that hook with, you know, 40, 50 feet of line out and the, the wind dragging the line. So a lot of power, real fast taper, real, real fast tip, um, and real, real sensitive. And metanium reel, I throw always throw an HG in the, you know, on my jig just so line pickup. That's the number one thing for me. That's a huge key for me. 16 pound Sunline Sniper. 
and uh, fluorocarbon. I mean, you detect the bites really good. Uh, really similar to this other rod, this is the first, first couple of fish I caught. This here is the new EcoPro um, prototype jig. Uh, I talked about the smaller, the smaller diameter of the hook, which I feel is really, really important in hooking those fish in deep water. Uh, a little 3.5 inch jackal chunk craw. 16 pound shooter. And the reason I was throwing shooter on this rod is because I was fishing a shallower. Uh, this is only a half ounce. Um, so I was fishing a shallower and I knew there were some bigger rocks where I didn't want to get broke off. And that shooter allows you to fish it through cover, in and around cover a lot better. Um, we got a fan in the background here. And then 7.5 R2, so ritual angling rod, series two, 7.5 medium heavy. And like I said, I was throwing the half ounce jig, so it's a perfect combination. Still has the power, but a little bit softer, so I can throw these lighter baits and detect bites and still drive the hook home. Same reel, Metanium HG. I can't say enough good things about that reel. I use it for jigs, worms, a lot of my reaction baits, but uh, the, the HG again, when I'm making these long casts and one bites it, you want to be able to pick up line fast and keep tension on that fish so you can land it. There's one. Dude, I was like getting ready to reel in and make another cast and one thumped it. Wow. What do we got? Talk about a non-bite. Look at that black fish. tail. It's a nice one too. We we're just getting ready to make another, make a move. I'm dragging that jig and it's just like mush. I mean, that's how inactive these fish are. But again, that's on that one ounce jig. And kind of similar to where we were fishing a little bit ago. Well, I was talking about the vertical drop. And right here, it looks like it, it's real flat, but it actually comes out and there's a hard drop on it. So just knowing the lake and stuff and using my electronics back in the day, especially when it's in the drought, that's how I actually seen it, to be honest with you. So if you turn around on the back side of you right there, that's what that looks like under the water. So that sheer cliff is right there. And those fish just move up and down and it's a really good spot in the spring because they'll move up out of that deep water and spawn up there on that flat. But man, these fish are lethargic. But I think I've showed these guys enough, not all my secrets, but just enough to where I still have the advantage. So I think we're gonna retie some stuff, maybe get a bite to eat and come back out and start a little derby.